you want to start? I sent a, an email to the BBC complaining about their uh, natural history programs. I love to watch the um, nature programs on, on the BBC and they're very, very good. They really are. Mm -hmm. They are superb and superb filming. Mm -hmm. But somewhere along the line, somebody says, millions of years ago, <laughs> and I've got so fed up with it <laughs> that I wrote to them. And I got an answer oh. this morning. Thanks for getting in touch about natural history <coughs> and science programmes on the BBC. I understand you feel the BBC has dismissed Judeo-Christian traditions and is biased towards evolution. We are clear that evolution is a scientific theory. Scientific theories are not claimed to be 100% fact, but are established by being tested against factual evidence. That is how science works and progresses. Evolution by natural selection is a theory that has been repeatedly tested and remains the best and most robust explanation for all the known factual evidence about life on Earth. The details of evolution have been refined as new evidence has emerged as happens with all scientific theories. However, no evidence or data has yet emerged that the fundamental principles of e evolution are unable to accommodate. The BBC Trust has previously considered similar complaints and one such is published here. And they give me a link. As you may be aware, most established Christian churches accept the theory of evolution whilst maintaining their faith. Well, that's up to them. As well as broadcasting science programs, we also produce religious ones as well. And can you continue to produce new and innovative, in, innovative programs addressing issues of religion and ethics? The BBC does not seek to denigrate any view, nor to promote any view. It seeks rather to identify all significant views and to test them, test them rigorously and fairly on behalf of the audience. Please be assured I've included your comments on our audience feedback report, which will be read by the producers and senior management managers across the BBC. Thank you for contacting the, the BBC. Gareth Murray, BBC Complaints Dean. Like they've dealt with it before. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have never read so much rubbish mm -hmm. in all my life. The thing about the uh, Christian churches, Christian churches that are happy with evolution, mm -hmm. but the one with the faith, you could say, well, we dealt with that on our Sunday before. It's called the parable of the wheat and tares. Funny, to be quite frank. Yeah. True and false conversion. There we go. It's interesting that they admit, on YouTube. It's interesting that they admit it's a theory and yet they put it across yeah. as though it's fact. Yeah. 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 This is the, the thing that if they said this is the theory, mm. I would have had no complaint. <laughs> but they state it as a matter of fact. Millions of years ago mm. you don't know that. Mm. Instead of Possibly you can't million, say that. Instead of possibly millions of years. Yes. Yeah. Or, or we believe. Or it, it, uh, some people believe. It is all that. Yeah. Now, therefore, I'd like to just spend a, a moment or two dealing with this. If we believe evolution, then... Contrary to what the Bible says, Genesis 1.31, Genesis 1.31, and this week we'll start with uh, Annie, Genesis 1.31, please. Index, Genesis. 
than God. So everything <coughs> that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Therefore, if we believe in evolution, contrary to what the Bible says, the following is true. One, since God created a world of death and suffering over billions of years, he cannot be good. Number two, the gospel is null and void because the New Testament links the, pers the reason for Jesus' death and resurrection to Adam's sin and the origin of death in Genesis. Whereas scripture tells us, 1 Corinthians 15, 21, 22. Fifteen. One Corinthians fifteen twenty one and twenty two. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So what is he talking about here? <coughs> Sure, understand. For since by man yeah, so came there, death. There was no death before what Adam did. Yeah. All right, so there was no death before Ammon, Adam. Yeah. Okay. Why did death come to Adam? Because he sinned. He dis was disobedient to God. Yeah? yeah? Okay. God said to him. Uh, because. Don't, 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 don't eat <coughs> Do not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for in the day you eat thereof you shall surely die. But we understand that Eve took the fruit and ate, and he gave, uh, she gave it to Adam, who was uh, there with her, and he ate. But she didn't dis disobey, did she? Why? Well, she disobeyed she's her alone. husband. But she didn't disobey God. Why? Because he gave her the old instruction. The instruction was given to Adam. To Adam. Yeah. She wasn't there when Adam was told. <laughs> was she? <laughs> She hadn't been created yet. She hadn't been created yet. It's only the end of chapter 2 that Adam is, is put into a sleep and Eve is created from his side. Yeah? Wouldn't he have told her though? Ah! Now, this is the, the, the second point, of course, is... Thank you for mentioning it. The second point is that he would have told her. And he was standing there. So he should have... He should have said, Drop that! <laughs> Who do you think you are? Yes? Why? Sure? Are you sure? Remember what you're saying. What is a man as far as his family is concerned? He is the priest. He is the priest. 
Okay. If the man is the priest, what is the job of the priest? To speak to God on behalf of the people. Okay. Does the woman have that task? No. no. The man has that task. Okay. To speak to God, in other words, the, the priest speaks to God on behalf of his family. Yeah? He speaks to God on behalf of his family. And so God said to Adam, you shouldn't eat of that fruit. She took the fruit and he should have said to her, leave it. You are not to touch it. But he said, you understand what was going through his mind? You're absolutely, well, you're absolutely, absolutely right, aren't you? <laughs> you see, he chose the woman over God. <clears throat> he chose the woman over God. You guys, better pay, uh, pay attention to this. <laughs> because what happens is, Instead of, therefore he sinned. She didn't sin. He sinned. Okay. So when he sinned, what happened next? His eyes just opened. Not, yeah, yeah, but, but how was that sin passed down? She then ate the fruit. No, he ate of the sorry, fruit. Sorry. Yeah. But how was that sin passed down with what I'm saying? Sorry? Procreation. Why? Leviticus 17, verse 11, please. Seventeen, verse eleven. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make atonement for your soul. For if it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul, okay, it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. But the first part, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Now, in the old way, a paternity suit was worked out by the child must have the blood of the father. Everyone? The child must have the blood of the father. Because the father's blood always passes down through the generations. Okay? Now, they used to work a paternity suit because they would never say, that is your child. They would say, that is not your child because it has the wrong blood group. They couldn't say, that was your child because there are only five blood groups in the world. Okay? And so therefore, we don't need to go into it. You, you understand. But you understand, they could turn around and say, that's not your child because it's a different blood group. So therefore, every child in this world today has got Adam's blood. Has got Adam's blood. It's descended from Adam. Every child is descended from Adam. <coughs> okay. 
for we all inherited our blood from Adam. Okay, so number three, for those who are taking notes, number three, <coughs> Jesus therefore erred in believing in Adam and Eve. Mark 10, 6 and 7. Obviously, Jesus believed in Adam and Eve because he said from the beginning of the creation God made them male and female. He didn't make Adam and Steve, he made Adam and Eve. We do understand that. <coughs> okay. And of course he believed the global flood. Luke 17, 26 and 27. Rosie, please. Luke 17, 26 and 27. actually quite interesting that Jesus says as it was in the days of Noah therefore he must have understood the days of Noah am I right as it was in the days of, of, of Noah how many were saved in the days of Noah There were eight. There were eight people saved in the days of Noah. Okay. How populous was the world in those days? Millions. A lot. <laughs> when you work it out, the flood was at 1500, okay, 1500 years past before the flood. Okay. So therefore, they lived for a long time. They didn't have television. <laughs> so they must have had quite a few children. So when you work it out, they were probably about, well, a few million anyway. Yes? If we go on in that scripture, it says, and in the days of Lot, verse 28. How many were saved in the days of Lot? Three in the end. Three in the end. Okay, four, but three. actually three. the one turned and became the pillar of salt. So three yeah. were saved in, 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 in the end. Okay. 
How big was Sodom and Gomorrah? Enormous. About a quarter of a million. How many people would be saved when Jesus returns? You realize what he said? quite sobering because eight were saved out of a few million, three were saved out of a quarter of a million. <coughs> we make sure that we're in the right doctrine to start with. Not only that, but Peter was wrong about the creation and the flood. 2 Peter 3, 4 to 6. 2 Peter 3, 4 to 6. Peter 3, 4 to 6. Well, covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words for a long time. They're just. Am I, am I, am I, am I wrong? 2 Peter 3? Sorry. 2 Peter 3, <coughs> 4 to 6. 4 to 6. And saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. For this they willfully forget that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in the water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. So Peter was totally wrong about the creation and the flood. And Paul was wrong about Satan deceiving Eve then. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 Andy please 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 <coughs> Two Corinthians. Um, verse 3 But I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, craftiness so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Let's understand there is a simplicity in Christ. Christ died for me. As long as I cling to that and I believe that he not only died for me but he rose from the dead in accordance with <coughs> Romans 10, 9 and 10 Thou shalt confess with my, thy mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in thy heart God raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. It is that simple. There is nothing to make it more complicated than that. So let's ask, did Jesus say at any time that he was God? If you've seen the Father, you've seen me. You've seen the Father, you've seen me. I and my Father are one. I and my Father are one. <laughs> Alistair, John 8, 56 to 59, please. John 8, 56 to 59. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. And the Jews said to him, You are not yet fifty years old, and have you seen Abraham? 
he just said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but he hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passing by. Understand, when Jesus said, I am, if you've got he after that in italics, cross it out. It's added. A lot of people say, I am, and then they write, he. If you've got that in your Bible, cross it out. Because it shouldn't be there. What does he say? He says, before Abraham was Yahweh. And the most important expression, and they knew God, because God said to Moses, when people ask, say, Yahweh, I am has sent you. And that's exactly what Jesus used, Yahweh. And if you read the next verse, it says, Then they took up stones to cast at him. Jewish people would follow the law assiduously. Yeah. Therefore, there were only two things you could stone somebody for. The one was adultery and the other was blasphemy. In the context, obviously, they didn't consider that Jesus had committed adultery. They considered he had committed blasphemy. They knew exactly what he was saying. That's why they picked up stones to stone him. So, let's have a look. What have we, if I'm teaching something in a, a, in a, as a historic fact in a school, what have I got to have as a parameter before I teach that as a fact? Evidence. I've got to have evidence. What? Good as proof of concept, evidence. Believe it or not, it's only two independent written accounts of the same event. I've got to have two independent written accounts of the same event. Therefore, I can teach that Harold was shot through the, his eye with an arrow in the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Why? Because there are two independent written accounts of the same event. You understand that evolution cannot be taught as a historic fact because there are no independent written accounts of the same event. Because nobody was alive then somebody who was alive and he's written it in, in his book for me <coughs> by the same token there is more proof for the life and times of Jesus Christ than there is for the battle of Waterloo which was 200 years ago There's more proof for the life and times of Jesus Christ than there is for the Battle of Waterloo. There's more independent written accounts of the life and times of Jesus Christ than there is for
for the Battle of Waterloo. That's quite phenomenal. That really is. <coughs> We're talking about thousands of manuscripts which refer to the life and times of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus came and he said to them, before Abraham was, I am. Therefore, we, he claimed to be God. If I came to you and I claim to be God, you have three choices. You can pick up the phone or get out your cell phone and from the local hospital and say, send along the guy with the white coats because I've got a lunatic here. Or you can turn around and say, you're a liar. Or you can fall down They're the only three choices you've got. <coughs> Lord, liar, or lunatic. You can't say he's a good man. You can't say he's a prophet. Because if you say he's a good man, no good man would claim to be God. You can't say he's a prophet because no prophet would claim to be God. And so therefore, Jesus doesn't leave us any room to manoeuvre. He actually paints us into a corner. Because if you study his life, what he did and what he said, then you must make a decision. Is he Lord? Liar? Or lunatic? you rush to say remember your eternal life depends on who you on what you say let's pray father we do give you glory and honor we thank you for Jesus who who came and said he was God and he would die for us John believed this when he wrote in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Mm. We thank you Lord that he is coming again. Mm. He is promised and he will come. We give you glory in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Any questions? <coughs> They don't even say I am in the Jewish language, do they? So like I am cold, they would say I am cold. They don't even do it, will they? It's quite interesting because when Jesus came to, or the, the, the guys came to arrest him, I don't know whether you know, but they said to him, he said, who do you, who do you, you seek for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Yeah. And he said, I am. Yahweh. Yahweh. <coughs> what happened next? They all fell over. They all fell back yeah, on backwards. their backs. Not one got but they got up yeah. and they still arrested him. Yeah. They didn't have a change of life. No. Please understand. When somebody falls over, doesn't mean to say there's any change in their life. Okay. And you will find that most of your um, Bible.
Bibles will say, I am he, I am the one you're seeking for, or something like this. He didn't, he just said, go away. Interesting, John Nielsen, Luke 22, at the end, when he's been in this trial, he says, they all said, are you then the son of God? He said to them, you rightly say that I am. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could that be a similar yeah. sort of incident? Yeah. And then they say, we've all heard the blasphemy of the Yeah. That's, that, that, that you, if, um, I mean, in John, is it in John 6? If you do not believe that I am, Something like that, but I can't remember. Can't remember. Is it John <coughs> John six? <coughs> Any other point? There's an awful lot of big a uh, chat tonight, isn't there? I've got a question. Yes. On another subject. Oh yeah. Got time? No, but, but go on. So, um, <coughs> remember Ezekiel was uh, given his, um, he was appointed as a watchman over Israel. Mm -hmm. And God said to him in Ezekiel 3, and if he you warn a man from his ways and, yeah. and he, he repents, and yeah, 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 yeah. You know, you've saved his blood, yeah. won't be on your head if, you, if he doesn't repent. You haven't warned him, yeah. and he's going to let his blood on your head. Yeah. And I looked at Acts today when Paul was talking to um, someone I'll find it a second and yeah, he was talking to the synagogue um, in Acts 18 I think and he said they rejected his message and he said uh, your blood's on your own head I'm clean, I'm going to go to the Gentiles now oh yeah mm. Acts, 17. Mean, yeah, Acts 17 yeah, Acts 17 does that mean that, that kind of heavy Responsibility is still the same. For it, it's it's actually Christian. quite interesting because in Acts, where it is, I can't remember. No, it's not in Acts. It's in the Gospels, <coughs> where Pilate <coughs> says, "What do you want me to do with this guy?" And he said, "They said crucify him." <coughs> Let his blood be on our heads and upon the heads of our children. Over 2,000 years, they have paid for that. My crying out loud, they have. My, I suppose my concern is that on the individual Christian's responsibility to share the truth with other people yeah. who are lost and sinners. I, I, would have, I would have thought, and yes. And says, woe to me if I don't preach the gospel. Yeah. So that's still another yeah. way that you can be serious sure. error sure. by not being obedient. By not being, 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 being obedient. Obviously, um, there are many people who are going to stand before God and God is going to turn around and say, but you didn't share the gospel with them. And that is a terrible thing. To think that, you know, um, it's very interesting because I was in charge of the Marine Division in Kariba, uh, the Police Marine Division, when we were fighting the terrorist war. And I was in charge of the Marine Division. And uh, there was. Uh, a guy there who brought his boat and I would train him to fire from his boat and all the rest of it, so on and so forth. Years later, I went to a, um, a seminar in Harare and there was this guy sitting there and I said to him, I didn't know you were a Christian. Oh, he said, I've been a Christian for years. And I said to him, but you never told me. But you never told me. Terrible. Mm -hmm. Because
because we have a responsibility to tell each and every person it doesn't matter what they think and 90 percent of the people i think you're off your head but it doesn't matter it's the word that's used in it so yeah yeah, yeah. that's uh, interesting you mentioned that because i i thought about that the other week that ezekiel scripture and i've not brought it back up i forgot forgot actually but because it's the looking at the context of it i'll have to read it again we, we know we not only on our way to heaven we know that and we know it's no no we, know we just want to no, be no. obedient because of the, the the grace but it is that uh, i've heard some i've heard some commentary on it before but again not how uh, it, it's not been backed up with anything else of it'll be like eternal rewards crowns for good and faithful sure. servant sure. but i don't yeah. know where, where you base that on uh, uh, as a you know to be able to say that definitely from the word you know as as far as gospel preaching does if you, if you know. i think the story of of um general booth is a very salutary story in this particular mm -hmm. case where he was uh, he started the salvation army uh, yeah. and he had this dream where he was bowing before christ mm. and uh, ev everyone was taking their crowns off and casting them before christ because they're his crowns not really ours cr uh, our crowns at all mm. he enables us to to earn them and he stretched up and took his crown off and cast it before christ and it was a size of a thimble mm. and he felt so ashamed mm. and he said Lord, enable me to have a crown to cast at your feet. And he started the Salvation Army, and um, the Salvation Army was a, a brilliant organisation. Yeah. <coughs> Regretfully, it's, it's not that now. Is it? Yeah, mm -hmm. but it started as a yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> uh, what's it? And yeah, he was saved. He was saved. Mm -hmm. But he wanted to glorify this person who'd saved him mm. so it's not a matter of salvation because you know then you, you then you'd say well there's another sin in addition to the unforgiveness of sin well that, that, that then you, then yeah. you've got to uh, a, you, you, then you're working for your salvation aren't yeah. you yeah. no no it's not as as andy says it's because i am so excited about being saved i've got to tell somebody Compassion. It's yeah. yeah. It's the other thing as well. I mean, it'd be interesting to because we asked the Lord you know, to do a study of that Ezekiel scripture and what that means. But yeah, the the, the commandments, the the love of God. You know, the first four. You're very five serious. Five loves. Hmm? You're, You're very, very serious. serious. It's about that compassion, isn't it? That's. Yeah. And the other thing as well is <clears throat> if we really, really believe they're in the hell, mm -hmm. and those yeah. that we love and care. Yeah or just mm -hmm. strangers are going there you know do we really believe that that's the thing that's sometimes you have to ask yourself you know yeah. of course we do but you know when you have a fear of man yeah. over, over a fear of god mm -hmm. so, you yeah. know it, it's it's i have to smile because i have got a, the landlady next door i'm going to pray for you i'm going to pray that god will do anything and I thought, you actually fear the Lord. Yeah. 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 You actually, yeah. deep down, you fear the Lord. Yeah, I've had people in the past say to me, but don't pray for me. They don't want you to. Because they're just. That scripture was Matthew 27, 24, and 25 about the blood being on us. Yes. But the interesting in 24, Pilate says, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And then they said, and all the people answered, they said, His blood be on us and on our children. Mm. I'm going to share that. Uh, one day I had a devotion, and then it seems the Lord is speaking to me. He said, Be gracious to all. And I was thinking that <coughs> because of His grace, I am saved. So, Lord, you want me to share your word, your love, and that is, that encourages me mm -hmm. to share the salvation to others because I'm saved because of His grace. Mm 
Mm-hmm. Amen. And looking back, how bad it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, just like to say something, guys. Just it, it suddenly came back to me. Um, some time ago, I lost my wallet. And uh, a lady and gentleman came and knocked on the door and said, we found this wallet. And uh, they returned it to me, absolutely intact. And the lady said, um, I like your scripture in your window. But I was so taken aback at the time that I didn't say anything. Mm. That lady was Rose. So it's amazing what the Lord does. Mm. Praise God. I thought he said that. So I was thinking mm. earlier, I wonder where she's from. I wonder if God's remembered where she's from. Well, d- Ross, yeah. Ross and, uh, oh, and I Matt. Know. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> but, uh, you know, I, I, we, I only discovered it this evening yeah. when Rose said... It's a really little while also, sort of, because I spoke to Max a few weeks ago. Well, quite a few weeks ago when Ross started coming mm-hmm. and uh, I said oh where does this John live then and she said uh, Thicket Mead I mean Thicket Mead is quite a big area yeah. and I sort of didn't think nothing of it and then I was laying in bed after I came here and 